Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. One might wonder why the U.S. would want to hand over an extremely versatile and technologically advanced aircraft to another country. In 2012, it did just that. Seventeen V-22 Ospreys were purchased by Japan in a $3 billion deal. The V-22 is capable of taking off and landing vertically like a helicopter, but can also fly like an airplane. It's also insanely expensive, around $100 million each. The transaction between the U.S. and Japan wasn't just financial. It was seen as a significant milestone in the U.S.-Japan security relationship. and it marked the first time that Japan had acquired offensive military capabilities since the end of World War II. The move was also seen as part of a broader effort by Japan to increase its military capabilities in response to growing security challenges in the region, including tensions with China over territorial disputes in the East China Sea. The V-22s were sent by boat to the Marine Corps Air Station in Iwakuni. The Iwakuni Air Station has advanced capabilities and a deep water port, allowing for aircraft to arrive by ship before receiving functional checks and flying to their final destination. Currently, the Japanese are using the Ospreys for several military missions and activities, including transporting troops and supplies to remote islands that are part of Japan's territory. Japan has a number of small islands located far from the mainland, they're important for defense purposes and have strategic value. The Ospreys are the perfect aircraft to access these islands because they take off and land like a helicopter. The aerial refueling capabilities of the V-22 also make accessing and protecting these remote islands easier. Because the aircraft can receive fuel while in flight, it has the ability to travel a long distance without relying on ground facilities for more gas. Aerial refueling also enhances security. The aircraft can remain in the air and continue its mission even in the face of enemy action. Fuel aside, keeping a B-22 Osprey in shape to fly is an intense process. Maintenance for this modern aircraft is complicated for three reasons. One, its design. The V-22 has both rotor blades for vertical takeoff and landing, as well as fixed wings for forward flight.
This complex construction requires specialized maintenance and servicing to ensure all its systems function correctly. In addition to its design, the B-22 Osprey is also subject to high demands in military operations. It's used for various missions, including troop transport, cargo transport, search and rescue, and special operations. These missions can be high stress and high impact, which puts additional strain on the aircraft and requires more frequent maintenance and servicing. Finally, safety is a top priority for the military, and the B-22 Osprey has had a number of incidents in the past, some of which were fatal. This has led to increased scrutiny and attention to maintenance and safety protocols to ensure the aircraft is safe and reliable for military operations. Safety and security come into play when the president is nearby. While the V-22 Osprey is not used to carry the U.S. president, the aircraft supports Marine One and Air Force One when they fly the commander-in-chief. For example, during President Barack Obama's historic visit to Japan in May 2016, B-22 Ospreys followed Marine One as it traveled from Iwakuna to Hiroshima. On international and some domestic trips, an MV-22 is normally stationed close to where the president is located and is ready to take off at a moment's notice in case of an emergency. The future of helicopter and tilt rotor transport is looking even faster, higher, and safer thanks to the Department of Defense's Future Vertical Lift Program, also referred to as FVL. The initiative is aimed at developing a family of military helicopters to replace the existing fleet of rotorcraft. Pursued by both the U.S. Army and Navy, the FVL program aims to improve mission capability, range, speed, and survivability. An important part of the FVL program is the soldier touchpoint component. This means that all aircraft being built are tried out, tested, and evaluated by foot soldiers. This step is essential to make sure that those who will be using these sorts of aircraft in day-to-day -day operations, as well as in wartime, have the opportunity to weigh in on the vehicles they'll be traveling in and the sort of technology they'll be dependent on. The FVL program has attracted significant interest from the industry, and several companies are competing to provide the technology for the next generation of military helicopters. The program is expected to have a significant impact on the defense industry, as well as the capabilities of the U.S. military. In December 2022, the Army announced that the V-280 Valor, a tilt-rotor aircraft designed and developed by Bell Textron, will replace the aging fleet of UH-60 Blackhawk utility helicopters. The V-280 is a next-generation aircraft 
that combines the speed and range of a fixed-wing airplane with the vertical takeoff and landing capabilities of a helicopter. It features a unique tilt rotor design, which allows it to take off and land like a helicopter, but then tilt its rotors forward to fly like a conventional airplane. With a top speed of over 300 knots, nearly twice as fast as conventional helicopters, the Valor has a range of over 2,100 nautical miles. It can carry up to 14 troops, or a combination of troops and equipment, and it is designed to be highly maneuverable and agile in combat situations. The V-280 has undergone extensive flight testing, and it has demonstrated its capabilities in a range of flight conditions. It beat out the Sikorsky Boeing SB-1 Defiant in the Army's future long-range assault aircraft competition. Beginning in 2030, the U.S. Army will gradually replace 2,100 Black Hawk helicopters and 1,200 Apache assault helicopters with the Valor. The value of the entire initiative, including future exports of Valors, might approach $70 billion. One day we may see military helicopters that look more like drones with four rotors. NASA's multi-rotor test bed is a place where scientists can study the aerodynamics, control, and stability of multi-rotor aircraft. This allows researchers to test and compare different types of rotors and configurations to determine which ones provide the best performance for different applications. The multi-rotor testbed is equipped with a suite of sensors, including accelerometers, gyroscopes, and magnetometers that provide real-time data on the aircraft's orientation and movement. This data is used to study the aircraft's stability and control, as well as to develop algorithms for autonomous flight. On this apparatus, which is placed inside a 7 by 10 foot wind tunnel at NASA's Ames Research Center in California's Silicon Valley, scientists are able to study the effects of wind and turbulence on multi-rotor aircraft, which is particularly important for applications such as search and rescue or delivery of goods in urban environments where wind and turbulence can be significant. While spinning, the rotors move between a forward airplane-like orientation and an upward helicopter-like one that can simulate vertical takeoff and hovering. The entire structure tilts too, mimicking different orientations of an aircraft as it flies. To highlight this range of motion, the video is shown at eight times the normal speed. The constant advancement of helicopters, tilt rotor, and multi rotor aircraft is an important step in modernizing the U.S. military and preparing for the challenges of future warfare. These aircraft offer significant advantages over conventional helicopters, 
and are expected to play a key role in a wide range of military missions in the years to come. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.